Hey everyone, welcome back to part three of my VP Force Rhino series, this time looking in more detail about mounting options armed with some additional tools and accessories which you can see here in the video. So let me talk you through what we're looking at and then we can go dive in into the customization options designed to get the grip and the feeling of motion absolutely bang on and perfect for your particular needs. Right, so starting left to right then, we have uh, down in the bottom here, the VP Force Rhino base, nothing unusual there. It's in its uh, default configuration. We're going to be looking at adding some physical limiters to this, but I'll talk uh, through that in a, in a few minutes time. Attached to the VP uh, Force Rhino base is a 90 millimeter bend extension. It came from a company called uh, called CubeSim. Uh, I bought it from eBay. It's a plastic printed part from China. It's well made. It feels very solid. Uh, you know, no issues there. It does have the cable extension inside for you to make the attachment with either a Thrustmaster Warthog or Verpool grip. Uh, on top of the the 90 mil extension, we've got a CM2 Verpal Mongoose grip. I prefer this grip for the finesse and use in helicopter flights. I've, as you'll see on the other side here, we've got a, a Constellation Alpha Prime, which is basically, I would say, a superior grip for all, all other um, situations that I've uh, I've come across. Um, so these these two grips are you know totally interchangeable. The CM2 is a little bit uh, I would say a little bit taller, or it feels that way in use. Anyway, next we've got a 75 millimeter extension from Verpal. As they supply that with a, an extension cable as well, it fits nicely inside. So just a, a straight 75 mil extension. Next to that, we've got a 50 mil extension again from Verpor, and this time using a, a solid uh, adapter with the you know the right pins and layout for the uh, for the warthog grip and the the Verpor grips. Below that, we have the mounting plates here, sitting on top of and bolted to aluminium profile extrusion that comes part of the Monster Tech center joystick mounting kit. So for those of you that have seen my previous videos, you'll know that I've got an MFC flight chair from Monster Tech, so I'm, I'm looking to mount my my joystick centrally uh, with the center cutout position removed from the chair. It's a, a feature and a benefit of that chair. You can get a mounting plate from Monster Tech and you can also get one from VP Force. In my case, I ordered this from VP Force at the same time that I ordered my base. Uh, what I didn't do was order any physical limiters, which is what you can see up here. They come in uh, in different sizes. I've got one. For some reason, uh, VP Force sent me uh, more than one, so not complaining about that. But uh, yeah, not sure what I've ended up with with several here. Um, you can see it's a 3D printed plastic part, feels very strong and, uh, uh, and well made. It has the uh, angles of degree of deflection that is allowed with the, the physical limiter. So the, so the idea is, is it sits in the joystick base like that. So I'll, I'll show you in a few minutes with the, the stem of the joystick going through the center and then it, it, it physically limiting its its range of motion with it being you know, screwed in in all four four corners there there's a uh, a lip stronger part representing the you know the edge of the physical range of motion that fits nicely within the within the joystick base um next up behind the the physical limiters we've got a very long I'm going, here we go, yep, very long 21 inch, 53 centimetre gooseneck extension. That was something that I had originally 
purchased for use with my Thrustmaster Warthog base that was mounted to a platform sitting on, on the floor, a weighted platform. And what I found with the such a long gooseneck extension, uh, particularly with the, uh, the Warthog base, was the range of motion was ridiculous. You know, it was it would swing into your knees and um, so far forward that you, you know, you had to lean not just off the backrest of your chair, but way out of it. So it had a um, uh, an enormous range of travel because there was nothing physically limiting the the Warthog base that was really designed to, to sit on a desk at the at the end of the day or, or attach next to you on, on some sort of some sort of simpit mounting system. Um, anyway, that's that's the gooseneck extension. So we've, if you remember from my last video, I was using the 200 millimeter gooseneck extension from Verpol, sitting between the uh, the Alpha Prime grip there and the CM3 base at the bottom. And I was again having that similar issue: the range of travel allowed by the VP Force Rhino base 22 degrees or, or, or thereabouts, I believe it is, with the extension, the 200mm the extension, sitting on top of the, the base, which already has a, a small extension built into it, something like 1400mm. Uh, it, it was, again, too, too much travel, hence the, the need to consider physical limiters or or even to to do away with the with the extension and uh, and you know you can mount the grip to directly to the base if you want or use shorter uh, shorter extensions to to get it right and in the perfect position so anyway those are the tools and accessories we have at our disposal now to try and get everything absolutely perfect All right, so next up, let's talk about how you try to position and visualise where you want the joystick grip to be and crucially also how you want the motion to behave and, and the grip to, to move. So what I did in, in my case was I took a, a grip that wasn't attached to one of the so the joystick bases, um, in my case, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to show you with my, my Thrustmaster grip there. Um, and yes, I have broken the, uh, the die cast metal stem. That's a, uh, a story for uh, another day there. Um, but um, just taking any joystick grip, it could be, could be these guys as well, is to close your eyes and sit up straight and comfortable in, in your chair and imagine that you're flying your preferred aircraft, the one that you'll be basically spending most of your your time in. And as you're closing your eyes and starting to position the, the grip, you can think of the Airwolf theme tune if you choose, just saying, everyone's <laughs> to their own choices. And start to move the grip around and it really helps if you've got uh, another person a partner able to either film or take plenty of photographs whilst you're doing that you can always place some sort of uh, fabric tape measure on your uh, and across your legs to show some perspective and, and scale and just imagine flying the the aircraft and Go back and look, where are you instinctively positioning and, and going to reach for, for the grip? Yeah, I, can, I can hold that with the, with the left hand and you know, does that feel about right and if not move it? And, and then look at the video of you moving the, the grip around. Because what that will tell you is not, not just the approximate position where you want the grip to be relative to your your body and your your uh, office chair pilot seat or simpit whatever you're 
whatever you're using, but also, you know, how much movements, physical movements are you are you doing, particularly around the, the wrist area? Because obviously the shorter the the extension that you use, the larger the range of deflection you can um, you can work with, but it might not feel natural to the type of aircraft or space sim ship or whatever that you're that you're flying. So in my case, my priority really for for flight simming, I would say, is getting the the helicopter experience right and then being able to make adjustments to suits, jets, general aviation, space sims, other aircraft, things like that. So in my case, I'm naturally wanting to, and I'm imagining the ability to do very fine but large deflections with my arm, not rotating all around my, my wrist, as I might do, for example, on a space sim and have it to, you know, my, my right hand side as I'm, as I'm right handed. And that will help answer the question for you as to how long of an extension on your joystick base would you like to have. And then, of course, that feeds into the physical limitations that you're going to have Due to the due to the size of the base, you know, this this VP Force Rhino base is uh, it, it is tall. It's sitting on the floor there. If you were in, for example, a, a motion rig that is typically raised off the floor to allow for physical, you know, three degrees of freedom or six degrees of freedom and motion. Um, you, you would probably have a bit more depth to play with. And in that scenario, you would have the most op range of options for the longest possible extension. And in fact, in, in my opinion, it's probably the only way that, they, that this gooseneck extension would even would even work, even sat on the floor, if I was to attach that to, to, to the rhino base, it, it would be too high. Yeah, you know, I'd be dealing with a, um, the joystick, grip somewhere around uh, chest heights which which of course isn't realistic or, or particularly comfortable even if I'm limiting the the range of motion so the I think the longest possible extension that you could work with with the Rhino base unless you're on a, a one of these motion rigs that's raised off the floor would be the 200 millimeter extension and then the question would be how do I restrict the, the physical range of motion to, to make that uh, feel right? So I'm not you know, moving the grip into my, into my left knee, into my right knee. I'm, I'm pushing it forwards and there's still more motion and, and, and range to go. But I can't physically push it all the way forward unless I come off the backrest of my chair and, and lean forward uh, in some sort of exaggerated motion which isn't again going to feel right I, I would say um, and then of course likewise you know bringing the, the joystick back into towards your body are you going to hit the the rim of the chair even with a center cutout are you going to hit that grip against your your body your your stomach or, or something like that which yes of course you could con control that you don't have to sort of, you know slam it into your into your body but then your you know like your finger controls on on the grip you're not going to be you know if it's really close to your to your body you're, you're not going to be able to operate any of the the buttons so that doesn't work either so that's a a balancing act that you have to do and you need a starting point for this um and the first point is where do i want to position the grip and that's going to be controlled predominantly by the the mounting option and the height of the the height of the extension. And once you've got that right, then you have to look at what physical limiters I need, if at all. Yeah. So if you 
I would say if you're going to mount the, the grip directly to the base, you can probably get away with not having any, any physical limiters. But if it's a long extension, you're going to need that default uh, 11 degrees that they, uh, that they suggest on, on VP force for the physical limiters. Um, I think I covered it before, but the, I've got the, a range of different the different sizes there. So let me show you how the physical limiters work on the Rhino base. Okay, taking a look at the installation of the physical limiters, how you do that is by default you've got four torque screws covering this uh, leather cover to to the base. Um, that's a Torx screw and uh, my Torx screw attachment there, so the, a star shape, not a Phillips or a cross point. Uh, I've removed three of them already, just for the sake of uh, time. So if I just remove the final one there. And if we lift up the... That feels like um, proper leather, by the way, on the, on the inside, uh, not so... Not a fake leather. It exposes the access, the internals of the of the joystick. In fact, actually, whilst whilst we've got that open, a couple of people had mentioned on my earlier videos that the the Rhino base, the the actual box and the construction was actually made of wood. And now I've removed some of the screws and can place my finger underneath I, I can indeed confirm that that is that is made of wood and is yes probably some sort of mdf material so it's a really nice quality paint and finish that they've put on on the top there but yes it, they uh, they were quite correct it is made of wood right so that's aside um i'm going to show you the installation of the this is the the default 11 degree physical limiter which comes in two parts, as you see. So if you notice, this this piece here has FWD for forward acronym printed on it. So that's going to go that way round. And what you find is this extended part of the limiter slots nicely into the base. So let's, uh, let's get that installed now. So that's the front one in. And now the rear one and you can see that the the holes on the physical limiter line nicely up with where the the torque screws were so if we just bring the the cover back down there that that screws down nicely and now what that means is instead of the the 21 degrees of standard motion we're now limited to approximately uh, 11 degrees. I don't know how they calculate it. I, I trust that they they know that based on the uh, the physical dimensions and angles and, and things like that. So you can very easily install the physical limiter if you were to replace the the Torx screws. Um, it doesn't take long at all to change the physical limiter. So. I think someone was asking me in another channel a couple of days ago about using the Rhino base in a in a space sim type scenario and uh, and then changing it to use the helicopters and and how easy would that be? Well, this is how easy it is. You you unscrew four screws, lift off the cover, put your plastic two part physical limiter in or take it out, and yeah, screw the screw the top back down again and uh, and there you go it's as simple as that okay now if we look at the mounting plate we've got a couple of options here to consider the in my case because I'm using the monster tech sensor joystick mounting solution it that a lot of that's already pre-designed and, and the work done for me there all, all I get to choose is which length of aluminium profile do I want in the vertical position and how much do I want in the horizontal position? Um, 
or or I cut it to size. It's, it's the is the long and short of it. I, I could order the mounting plate off Monster Tech instead of VP Force. That that is an option as as well. The the, the two main options you've got here with the well actually there's there's probably more than more than two. There's there's three I would say to consider. The first is do you mount this plate with the screws at the back as I've got here or or at the front? Now in order to answer that question you've got to think about the other option that I'm going to talk about. So the, the VP Force mounting plates, I've actually customised this. I've bought these holes in closer to the, the centre of the mounting plate and chopped off the, the excess material at the back. This is the, the piece that I've removed. So, you know, if you can imagine that sitting at the back, that's what it was originally. Now, why have I done that? So, the problem I was facing was I felt my rhino base was too far away from my, my body. And you've got a couple of options there to, to compensate for that. But let's, let's focus on what can the mounting plate do to help. So, obviously, when you're bolting the mounting plate, you can either you've got it you've got two possible positions so i could reverse that round turn this around and have the the bolts at the front but then what i'd have to do is have a longer piece of aluminium profile that's sticking out of the front of my front of my chair and also the mounting point would be further away from the main you know profile and mounting point that to to the chair you know because it bolts in here and and here so if I got it attached down at the front it's physically going to be larger and potentially not not quite as stable was it was was my thinking there but it is a possibility and that was some, something to consider now now that I've removed the, you know, the the additional length and, and piece of metal on the mounting plate, I, I could actually, you know, reverse this round and put the the edge here right up against the the aluminium profile. But there's a problem there. Two problems, in fact. Depending on which way round you've got the joystick base positioned, it's probably. Let's see if I can show you. That. So you've got that position for the joystick base bolted to the mounting plates in you know the four corners there, but of course I can rotate that round 180 degrees and have it that way. Which brings it closer to the uh, you know to the to the chair and the and to the mounting point. And obviously you would turn the uh, the extension and the grip around as way uh, as well. So it's facing the right way. But you could you could have it mounted like that. In fact that was where I started off with in order to bring it um, close enough. But if you have it in that position, you're having to reach past the, the rhino base and the, uh, the joystick stem to access these controls, which, you know, you, you could work with. It, it could be a problem if there's, um, you know, if there's an issue with the motion of the, of the joystick and you wanted to hit the kill switch, because in, in a way you've got to force your way past the the uh, the stick potentially in order to hit the kill switch and uh, you know and turn off the power to to the motors. But the other one is is the electrical connection points here for the USB and power, and now much closer 
to that uh, that aluminium profile there, and you would need a, a solution to that, probably a, a, some sort of right angled connector. Um, so it's not as as straightforward as you as you would imagine by by simply just just turning it around. And then in this configuration, you've got to consider. Well, I talked about this briefly in the last video. You've got a fan here to. Um, you know, keep the motors cool when they're under load. So you've got to leave a little bit of a of a gap here to allow some some air um, airflow through to keep the system cool. Uh, if it's uh, starting to overheat, I think it's about fifty degrees. It it kicks in. When you balance all of that together, yes, you've got lots of different options. But for me, this is the preferred option having the joystick mounted in this configuration with the the controls closest to to me and the and the chair bearing in mind i do have a center cutout in my chair being able to reach them if you didn't have that then it's possible you would uh, arrive at a different uh, conclusion because otherwise you'd have to you know getting your hands under to try and uh, you know access the the controls um and on the other side, the you know the power and USB coming out the front there, which I'll probably wrap around underneath the aluminium profile using a uh, some sort of cable clip. But in this configuration, having chopped off the the excess material that I felt wasn't wasn't necessary, that's brought the the base in as close to the pilot's seat and chair as you could as you would want uh, you know without blocking the fan off and then of course to get even closer we've got the short gooseneck extension here not well not really a gooseneck is it at, at 90 millimeters long but you, yeah you understand the a bent uh, e extension and short meaning that i don't have to restrict as much of the physical motion of the joystick as I might otherwise have to if it was the 200 millimeter extension from uh, from Verpal, the longer uh, extension. And that has basically resulted for me as being the the optimal position. So I'll show you now it's all properly mounted to the to the pilot seat and chair. Okay so here we can see the VP Force Rhino properly mounted to the pilot seat in the configuration that I described. It was the 16 degree limiter, by the way, that I ended up using and, and it, it feeling right in its range of motion, which I'll show you in a, in a second. But just to illustrate the earlier point, you know, this is the, the 21 inch gooseneck extension. So even when I, I rest it on the floor, it, it's approximately the same the same height, which is actually kind of useful to help with the measurements and the and the positions. But there's no way I can get my my Rhino base low enough in order to use an extension like like this. So even with a like an 11 degree physical limiter, that's this is out of the question without a raised platform. A project for another day. The 200 millimeter extension, I think, is a possibility, and it's something I'm going to explore in. I think over the next uh, the next few months because I do have a bit of play and, and range here left to lower the base further and the option of uh, an 11 degree physical limiter to to go in in there but I, I want to try this out first because one of the other effects that you get with the the physical limiters of course is you're restricting the full range of travel that the sensors can, can track. You're also adding more mechanical leverage and the potential for force against the force feedback motors. Uh, in other words, making them or the force feedback experience weaker. But yes, very happy with the position and the feeling for this. So I'll, I'll show you quickly. So in my case, that's the 
the range of left and right motion. Just, just touching the edge of my inner leg on the right hand side there, but then the, the grip is not symmetrical. There's a palm rest on the right hand side of the both the CM2 and the, the Alpha Prime. But more importantly, that's the limit of travel bringing it back. In fact, if I sit up more straight, that, that's a comfortable position there. I wouldn't want it any further back towards my body. And likewise, that's the range of travel going forwards. So if I hold my arm out straight, that is comfortably the limit for me. Obviously, if you were taller, you'd potentially have longer arms than I have and might want some additional travel. In which case, you have the option of physically moving the joystick forward a little bit or having a more um, degrees of freedom on the, the, the physical limits within the base. Personally, I wouldn't go any higher than 17 degrees with this 90 millimeter extension and for comparison let me show you you know what that looks like relative to the you know, the uh, the Verpal CM3 with the 200 millimeter extension so if I put them side by side I'm trying to line up the the kind of pivot points of the Verpal there with the the Rhino, what, what you can see is it's slightly taller on the VP Force. So with the, the CM3 and it's, I think it's 15 degrees range of motion, the way I've now got the VP Force Rhino set up is with very slightly more degrees of uh, angular deflection, one degree in, in each axis, and the the net results of the extension and grip being no more than an inch longer, less than that. In in fact, probably only um, you know, one or two centimeters at the at the most. And that gives me a very similar experience then to the to the range of motion that you'd get on the Verpal CM3 with the the two hundred millimeter extension. That's that's really where I'm I'm going with that at the end of the day, because of course the you have from here to here already you know, built into the to the Rhino base. So that plus 9C is slightly more than the CM3 plus 200. Very good, very happy with that, feels very natural. And at a strong personal request from a friend of mine, I'm now gonna show you the Rhino base actually powered up and uh, and running, finally. <laughs> we seem to have procrastinated over that a, a little bit, but I wanted it to be right. The, you know, you, you spend that much time and effort on the, not just the joystick base, but the mounting solution, the, the grip, the chair, the whole, the whole thing. Um, it's, it's important that it's, that it's right for you because then it's all worthwhile in the end. All right, so I've got the Rhino now connected to the, the PC via its USB connection and the uh, its external power supply. It is powered up. Show us it working, bangers. Show us it finally. All right, <laughs> private joke there. Um, let me show you the the behaviour of the stick. Of course, the thing with force feedback is it, it's difficult to show, easier to describe. So you're going to have to. Kind of bear with me on that on that front. The first thing that we need to do is disengage the kill switch here to actually tell the device to start operating and functioning with the controls. So we twist that and it pops up and you get a, a chirp from windows that you probably heard in the background and uh, a light sort of audio alarm from the from the device itself. The first thing that you notice is now when I move the joystick, it feels smooth. The cogging, the you know, the feeling of the 
gears, the teeth or the magnets in the in the motors is practically gone. I, I would I'm I'm just trying to see if I can feel whether it's there at all. Very slightly. I mean, certainly nothing that you should be worried or, or concerned about. I'm, I'm literally trying my hardest to see if I can feel the sensation of of, of any kind of cogging or stiction or or anything like that. And, and really, uh, it, it it's at the limit of my ability to um, you know to, to sense and detect that. So the. The joystick in its default configuration, uh, I believe it's got some some springs and, and tensioners in inside, is, is pretty much in this kind of dead stick configuration. So it holds its position but it, it moves it moves freely round. There is no force feedback acting on that right now. It's just that uh, motion smoothing if I get the words out. If I start to increase the the power and the effects via this dial here, what you'll see is this joystick start to return to its central position, which is what the software is telling it to do right now. Obviously, it'll do what's you know what it's asked to do, but just to illustrate the ability of the force feedback to take effect. Yeah, you see that? So that was about I don't know, about a hundred degree turn on, on the dial there. And now when I I move the joystick, it returns to the centre. Additionally, and again this is hard to hard to show but easier to describe. So I'm pulling the joystick forward here, I'm meeting what feels like more resistance. Like I'm fighting against something. Very light, very light, more, 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 very noticeable. Yeah, the amount of force that I'm having to 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 apply there, as if you're in a plane and you're fighting against. I would imagine the um, uh, the force of airflow over your control surfaces. That's how I would picture it. It also occurred to me earlier today, well, you know, what use is that to anyone that's interested in space sims? Because, of course, the, you know, it's the force of thrust, isn't it? Uh, rather than, you know, there's no, no friction out, out in space in a, in a vacuum. But, of course, I suppose there's, there's two things to consider there. One is um, possibly the thruster um, force might have some kind of feedback you know, the further you deflect it, the the more thrust is being applied and, and that being fed back to the pilots. But of course, in this day and age, with the likes of Elite Dangerous, Star Citizen, No Man's Sky, um, X4 to some degree, you have planetary landing or, or the the ability to fly through an area of space or atmosphere where you might go from a completely like zero resistance to having the sensation of uh, force feedback, which would be amazing. Uh, I mean, that that would be really cool. It would feel totally different for you know, atmospheric planetary type flights in your spacecraft versus uh, out out of space. I don't know. It was just a thought. But there we are. That's the force feedback joystick working. Uh, I haven't got it properly set up on DCS and flight sims yet to show you uh, the, you know, the the effect or the impact for example of landing on an aircraft carrier and it you know moving around to you know, translate the force back into you but you could start to appreciate how that can happen um, now that I've shown you the, the force feedback taking effect and when you're when you're done you can either disengage the or remove the the effects of the force feedback on the dial here or push the 
dead switch down and now we're completely back to its disengaged format. So if you did run into any kind of problems, if it, for example, the force feedback stick um, was trapping your, your fingers or um, was in a position that it, because the software is telling it to do something that you don't want it to do, um, having that kill switch close to you and easily accessible, I think is uh, is is really important. You know, maybe you've got a a pet uh, that suddenly decides to jump onto your lap or something like that, and you need to find the switch and kill it. Much better that it's closer to the pilot seat than having to, you know, to reach across to the other side. In my opinion, um, because you could be obstructed by your your stick thrashing around or something something crazy like that. So, thanks for watching. Hopefully, you found that useful. If you've got any questions, any thoughts, leave them in the comments below and I will endeavour to uh, to get back to you. I do read all of the comments by the way and all of this equipment that you see me review, uh, certainly at, at the moment, this is, this is all my own equipment owned by me. I'm free to say exactly what I like. Uh, it's not sponsored, gifted, loaned uh, in any way. It, it is completely my own so I just wanted to clear that up if anybody's uh, concerned or, or doubts the integrity of my videos. All right, thanks again and see you on the next one.